Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. Not so long ago, it would have seemed absurd to describe merit as undervalued. Well, because merit has for time immemorial been venerated. Alas, today, demographic factors sit aside merit in allocating taxpayer spending, nonprofit spending, as well as in hiring, in promotion, and in college admissions. To defend that, activists use concepts such as unconscious bias, externalities, leveling the playing field, institutional racism, income inequality, and legacy of slavery. Plus, it feels good to allocate resources to those with the greatest deficit. How can we not try to level the playing field, quote unquote, for past and current victims of prejudice? Even though the top 1% of earners already pay more in income taxes than do the bottom 90%, how can we not feel good about taking more from mansion owners to give to the poor? But, as every battlefield medic knows, the most benefit derives not from allocating limited resources to the worst off, but to the people most likely to benefit. So every time we make a decision based on anything other than what will do the most good for humankind, we're doing less net good than we could. Not often enough asked is what I call the question. Is whatever benefit that redistributive quote-unquote justice yields to its beneficiaries worth the cost to the victim of that redistribution and critically the cost to society? What are the benefits of decision-making based purely on merit, not tilting decisions toward any race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, religion, or age? First, Hiring and promoting based purely on merit means that the organization's workers have the pleasure of higher quality co-workers. More broadly, that results in better products and services for us all, whether it's better medical treatments, government and nonprofits that do more good, or merely a better or more affordable smartphone. Next, similarly, we do the most good for humankind when we allocate slots at prestigious colleges and graduate schools to the candidates most likely to improve society. One more example, we do the most good for humankind when, as citizens, we vote for candidates who are committed to enacting laws and policies that help ensure that resources get allocated to those with the greatest potential to contribute. For example, can it be in society's long-term best interest to allow what's called disparate impact policies, which, for example, prohibit asking job applicants if they've committed a felony, which thus gives no credit to applicants who've never committed a felony. Every dollar, every moment, that is allocated to a person or a group with a greater deficit than allocating to a person or group with greater potential to contribute to society pulls us further down toward what I call poverty egalitarianism. We're more equal, but equally poor. So, as you make decisions in your work life, in your personal life, and as a member of society, think about the common good. What decision would yield the greatest good for humankind? I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up if needed a thumbs down. Your comments, your sharing, there's a share button there, share on your social media, um, or subscribing to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.